One of the most difficult parts of this next concept is just pronouncing this damn word. It's a parallelopiped. 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 So imagine that you take a bunch of rectangles and you slap them together. In three dimensions, you would get a box. Now, imagine that you do the exact same thing, except instead of using rectangles, you decide to use parallelograms. So, no rectangles, just parallelograms. We're going to use these parallelograms to make a box. I already see that this is not going particularly well, but you know what? We'll make it work. Cool! I think, uh, well, aside from this wonky side here, that worked out okay. So, parallelopiped is essentially a 3D figure that is comprised of parallelograms, whereas a box would be constructed using rectangles. Now, generally speaking, when you have a parallelopiped, you define it in terms of three vectors. And they would be the three vectors that are not all parallel to each other. So, the three vectors in question would be these three guys, assuming that they all have the same initial point. So what I'm going to do is refer to this guy as U, refer to this guy as V, and this guy here as W. Now with that in mind, the volume of a parallelopiped is calculated very similarly to how you would calculate the volume of a box. The volume of the parallelopiped is going to be equal to the area of the base times whatever the height happens to be. Now unfortunately because these aren't all mutually orthogonal with each other we are going to have a little bit of difficulty with this calculation. So the um, area of the base, well the area is a parallelogram we know how to find the area of a parallelogram now that would be the magnitude of the cross product of v and w. Now when I do find what that vector is, what we're going to wind up with is something that is orthogonal to both of them. So v cross w would be orthogonal to v as well as orthogonal to w. Now next up, in order for us to get the height of the box, you'll notice that the height is not necessarily going to be in excellent form. The good news is that in order to get this height we can use a little bit of right triangle trigonometry to show that this is simply going to be the uh, length of u times the cosine of the angle in between these two vectors. So this will be multiplied by u times the cosine of the angle between them. By an amazing coincidence, we now have the formula, or one of the formulas, for the dot product of these vectors. So this would be the dot product of u, no magnitude, parentheses. There we go. Now this of course assumes that this quantity is positive, but we know from our study of the dot product that that's not necessarily true. So what we're going to do is throw some absolute values around this. Now, this guy in here does have a special name, as I've referred to in one of the previous video videos. This is referred to as the triple scalar product. We call it triple because there are three vectors involved. We call it scalar because the final result is going to be a scalar. And we call it a product because it involves both a cross product as well as a dot product. So. Pretty straightforward in terms of the name of this thing. Now, in order for you to calculate this volume, at the very least, you would need to know what these three distinct vectors are. So when we work through our next example, we'll do exactly that.